Hello and welcome to Heartlight Vedic Astrology. In today's talk, I was going to um, discuss planet velocities or Graha Vega um, as they apply uh, to Vedic Astrology or Jyotish. Um, all of my Vedic Astrology uh, Jyotish teaching videos are in my concepts playlist, um, as is this video. Um, I don't think you need to watch other videos to understand this one, um, but there are other videos that I think would be helpful um, to watch before, after, you know, kind of in conjunction with, because I think they would support each other. So those videos are um, the symbolism, symbolism of the planets. Um, I have all of those in my Planets or Grahas playlist because the velocities do affect the symbolism of the planets. Um, uh, the Lugna, Ascendant, Rising Sign, First House, um, that's important um, because I'm going to talk about velocity and the Lugna. And also um, the Astronomy playlist. I don't have a lot of videos there. But um, the, the the concept of planet velocities is, is essentially astronomy. So um, the essential astronomy uh, an astrologer needs, that's all in that playlist. All right, so planet velocities or Graha Vega in Sanskrit. Um, what is it and why do we care about that um, as astrologers? Well, <laughs> planet velocities essentially are how fast planets move and on average um, for the astrology point of view an average is, is good enough uh, for our purposes um, and the values I've listed later in this talk are averages so keep that in mind. There are two um, concepts, astronomy concepts though that are important. So one is diurnal motion and diurnal motion is if you think about it um, like the way the sun moves or the way we interpret or see the sun moving is essentially we see the sun, again, relative to our position on the planet. We see the sun rise in the east and set in the west. And this happens once a day or once every 24 hours. And this is always a forward motion. It's always, you know, the sun never goes from west to east. <laughs> At least not yet. You never know, I guess. But... <laughs> Um, so that's diurnal motion, and not just the sun does that, but all the planets do that. Uh, they rise in the east and set in the west from the point of the view of the observer. There's also the concept of proper motion, and this is when planets move along the zodiac, and the zodiac is essentially a parade of constellations, right? There's Aries, and there's Taurus, and then there's Gemini. Um, and the planets move along the zodiac actually from west to east. So this is relative to the stars because stars make up the constellations. So actually the planets move forward um, through the uh, zodiac. Um, they're forward most of the time, unlike diurnal motion. Um, in proper motion, planets are forward most of the time, except when they're going through retrogression. retrogression. And um, only some planets go through retrogression. Okay, so diurnal motion, proper motion. Um, so how does how does planet velocities, the concepts of planet velocities, influence interpretation, um, astrological interpretation? Well, it does um, influence the way we um, see the planets and their qualities and characteristics. Um, but primarily, it's important for the timing of results and when results may or may not occur. So, um, along these lines, um, what does it mean for, like, the character of each planet? So, for example, the moon is a very fast planet. The moon, as a, as a planet, what it symbolizes, symbolizes the mind, um, but it's it's very changeable and it's very fast. So you could have be in an angry mood one minute and then be in a happy mood the next, or you could be, you know, uh, sad one day and the next day you're floating on, on on the clouds. So the moon, the general notion of the moon in its interpretation is it's fast, but it's also fickle, as opposed to Saturn, which is a, the slowest planet. And so whenever we see Saturn, we always think of like slowness and delays and stuff like that. And part of this is based on how fast these planets actually move. Because again, you always have to remember Vedic astrology was developed over 5,000 years ago before there was any technology, you know, or telescopes or anything. 
So all of this astrology was based on what the eye could see on its own. Okay. So that's how it can influence how we see planets and, and what they do and what they deliver. But also how fast the planets move tells us when planets recreate their natal position. So the original position that they were in um, at the birth of somebody or something. So this is essentially um, significant because it, it, it basically indicates the completion of a cycle. And typically when planets go back into their natal position, there is some sort of significance to that typically. Um, because again, it does sort of create strength, not in the way that we think of strong planets, like it's in retrograde, you know, it's retrograde, so it's stronger, or it's in its own house, so it's stronger. But there is this sort of, again, personal significance for planets um, coming back and recreating their natal position. Um, and we know when they're coming back into their natal position based on average planet velocities. Um, the other thing is that how fast planets move through different constellations or Rashis and or houses or Babas, um, that tells us how long a planet will deliver results in a certain area or aspect of somebody's life. So um, if Mercury moves through a sign or a house in about 22 days, that's about three weeks, um, you know, Mercury's going to you know, uh, deliver its results and move on. So it's going to be fairly quick. Whereas Jupiter spends a year in each house or a constellation. So Jupiter during that year, you may not see results immediately with Jupiter, um, depending on, you know, different aspects of Jupiter, but, um, or different, uh, aspects. Uh, I gotta watch that because aspects mean something different in astrology. But, uh, what I meant to say was, um, the different things that contribute to the condition of Jupiter, how strong Jupiter is, um, and you know what other planets are influencing Jupiter, that sort of thing. Um, so when you go into uh, a Jupiter period, for example, you won't necessarily see um, the results of that planet um, right away. Although, again, also make sure you don't confuse planetary period timing with planet velocity. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what else do we have here? Um, this is also part of why one of the major things, uh, differences between Vedic astrology, Jyotish, and Western astrology is that we emphasize different things. So, if somebody tells me they're a Scorpio and they're talking about Western astrology, what they're telling me is that their sun is in Scorpio in the Western system. But because there's about, at this moment, about 23 degrees difference between the way we calculate um, constellations in the Western, in Western astrology versus uh, Vedic astrology, um, if they tell me their sun is in Scorpio, that means most of the time, you know, what about 70% of the time, their sun is actually going to land in uh, Libra. Yeah. So the constellation before it, um, you know, about 30% of the time, it will still be in Scorpio. So that's a difference there. But that's also um, the rate or the quickness, the speed of these planets is also important because the Lugna changes signs um, on average every two hours. The moon changes signs about every two and a half days, and the sun changes signs about every 30 days. So if we're looking at precision, you know, um, we really want the fastest moving thing. We want to pin that down, and we pin down the lugna with a specific birth time, an exact birth time. If you don't have an exact birth time, you won't be able to necessarily know what your lugna is, and then we can assess from the moon, but we don't get as much information from that. Um, because again, because the moon, um, is slower, it won't be as precise. The other thing is that you won't be able to, um, calculate subcharts, subzodiacs, amshas, and so you won't have that information available to you. So again, getting back to those planet velocities, that's part of why when we're assessing a birth chart, we look at Lugna first, which is also the Ascendant Rising Sign first house. Um, and 
we assess that because it's so specific. It's kind of like, I think of it as like, you know, identifying somebody by their fingerprints, like that precise where, you know, nobody has the same fingerprints on the planet, even twins. Um, um, although some people don't have fingerprints. So it's kind of, there's always exceptions, right? But most people have fingerprints and even between twins, their fingerprints are not the same. And so the same is true with astrology is that if you want to see very minute differences between two people who were born in the same place, like twins, you would really want the information of their love knot to tie that down and the specificity of both individuals. Um, whereas if you assess from the moon, it's kind of like if you see a bunch of people and they all have blonde hair or brown hair, like you're getting closer, like, okay, well, at least we can, we know they're blonde or they're brunette. <laughs> um, but you may not get it, get as much precision or specificity. And then if you assess from the sun, um, that's kind of like if you see a bunch of people across the street and you're like, oh, these are the tall ones and these are the short ones. Or something like that. So again, there's less precision. Um, and sometimes you can assess all three, the lug of the moon and the sun, to really get a lot of data um, and information about somebody. But to get the most precise data, you would need the lug nut. And part of the reason why is because it moves the fastest. So it's all important. So let's actually look at some numbers here. So here we have a chart. This is planet velocities, Graha Vega, and this is proper motion. Yeah, so this is how fast they're moving through the zodiac. And you can see um, I've listed things here from fastest to slowest, going from top to bottom. And at the top here, we have the Lugna. And the Lugna changes um, per day 360 degrees. So the Lugna shifts, it goes through the whole cycle once a day. It's fast, yeah. And so per constellation of Rashi, on average, um, it takes about two hours for the Lugna to shift. Now, again, this is an average. So depending on where you are on the planet, uh, north or south of the equator, and what time of year it is, that can be longer or shorter. Because again, if you're in the northern hemisphere in the middle of winter and you don't see the sun, then, um, <laughs> you know, the, the few constellations are, are, are going to go through very speedily during the whatever two or three hours of daylight or close to daylight that you have. And then the other uh, lugnas are going to go slower. So, um, you know, you, sometimes you have lugnas that are an hour and a half and sometimes they're two and a half hours, depending on whether they're long or short ascension. But anyway, that's probably more information that you need right now. Um, and again, it takes a full day for the Lugna to cycle through. Then we have the moon. So per day, the moon moves um, a little bit more than 13 degrees, 13 degrees, 20 minutes. Um, it takes about two and a half days for the moon to go through a constellation or Rashi. And again, we could even say Baba here, right house, um, because the way we line it up is that houses correspond with constellations. Um, and it takes a little bit over 27 days, 27.3 days, almost 28 days to go through a full cycle. Okay, then we have Mercury. So per day, Mercury moves 1 degree 15 minutes. It takes about 22 days for Mercury to go through a constellation or Rashi. And it takes about a year for Mercury to make its full trip around the zodiac. Then we have Venus. Venus is a little bit slower than Mercury. It moves about a degree a day. It takes about 26 days to go through a constellation, so a little bit longer than Mercury, and again, approximately a year to go through its full cycle around the zodiac. The Sun, similar, pretty close to Venus, but a little bit longer. Um, again, I didn't have very specific times because, one, it's more math than you really need or want to do as an astrologer. Um, these numbers are good enough to do the work as an astrologer. Um, also, I was trying to find more precise numbers and the astronomy data. Wow, astronomers really like their data and their calculations. And I frankly didn't understand half what I was looking. So I was like, I just I just need a basic number to work with on a day to day, day, -to -day basis as an astrologer. And so um, these are the numbers that I found that, again, they're soft and most astronomers will probably not be happy with them. But as a working number, 
that's also easy, fairly easy to calculate in your head when you're looking at charts um, and to approximate like when things are moving, these numbers work pretty well. So um, yeah, so Venus, one degree a day, about 26 days to go through a constellation Rashi and about a year to go through the full zodiac. Sun, uh, also about a degree a day, a little bit longer, 30 days um, to go through a constellation of Rashi and about a year, right? The solar calendar, a year to go through its full cycle around the zodiac. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the outer planets. So we have Mars, and that moves about half a degree a day, 32 minutes. It takes about um, 45 days or a month and a half to go through a constellation. So Mars, because it's farther away from the sun, has um, a longer distance to go, um, and so it takes longer, uh, so a month and a half, and it takes about a year and a half to go through its full cycle, so to return to its natal position, if we're looking at a chart. Then there's Jupiter. It only moves five minutes a day. Um, it takes about a year to go through a constellation of Rashi, and it takes 12 years to go through its full cycle. Then Rahu and Ketu, the nodes of the moon, they're slower, well, even slower. Um, again, Rahu and Ketu are calculations. They're not um, actual physical planets. But they move three degrees, uh, excuse me, three minutes a day. It takes about a year and a half um, for them to go through a constellation of Rashi, and it takes 18 years to go through the full zodiac. Then the slowest planet here, um, Saturn, uh, it moves about two minutes a day. Um, it moves through the constellation about two and a half years, and it takes 29 and a half years, almost 30 years, to go through its full cycle. All right, so again, you want to know, as an astrologer, you want to know which ones are fastest, which ones are slowest, and about approximately how fast, um, again, depending on what you're calculating, but how fast they move per day, per constellation Rashi, and then the full cycle. So there you go, some some numbers to work with. Uh, so there you go, uh, planet velocities, why they're important, and uh, numbers to use, at least the numbers I use when I'm, I'm looking at charts and stuff. And again, the numbers I've presented here are the ones that work pretty well for most things. Um, although uh, Vedic astrology is so vast, at some point maybe I'll learn something different or another aspect of astrology and we'll um, have a... Um, more to say about that, but um, at least if you're just starting out, if you're a beginner, and even if you're fairly immediate or even advanced, uh, the numbers I presented here work pretty well when you're eyeballing charts. So, uh, as always, thank you for your time and your interest um, in my work, Vedic Astrology uh, generally, and I hope this helps you as you navigate the cycles, energy cycles of your life. Take care. Namaste.